We're just thanking God for the progress it looks like we're having with Lemi over here. It um, looks like she is doing pretty good on eating her food. She ate it all last night. Jennifer got her to eat it all. And then to this morning, I was able to get her to eat all of her food with the apple cider, cider vinegar mixed in with it. And last night when Jennifer was uh, getting her to eat all of her food, she ended up going into Mama Skittles cat box in there and it seemed like she did a good amount of number one in there. So that's a good thing compared to the little amounts that she kept going to the box, you know, just time and time and time again. And in cleaning the cat boxes, I haven't really noticed any little peas in there like there, there was before. So uh, just kind of like full urinations that the cats usually do. Haven't seen any of the little ones. So we're just thanking God for the progress here and just praying that she will just be free of this issue that she's had without going to the vet. So awesome deal. Right, Lamy? So awesome news that Lamy is doing better. Jennifer and I just had a meeting yesterday and figured out our, went over the budget and see where we're at um, with us coming into the month that we're going to run out of half of our finances. And it looks like we're going to be about $530, $520 short, something like that. And she just left to go to the grocery store and use our last $54 for groceries for this week. So this is where the rubber really meets the road, I think, where we're going to see if we're really going to trust uh, God with what he showed us in the Bible verse that um, he gave Jennifer and the little devotion that we went through with John and Lisa Bevere. So here we go. Are we going to trust God and just do the work that he's called us to do and not worry and stress about finances? Or are we going to continue to go on the path that we realize that we were on in um, not trusting God in that area? In the past, we've seen God continually come through. But also the other thing that I'm realizing is that in the past, I've always tried to make something happen on my own and not just be trusting God and doing the things he's called us to do, but, uh, you know, trying to work and make something happen in my own power, starting businesses, trying to get a job, trying to figure out how to get funding or whatever, you know, something that I can do on my own rather than just resting and trusting that God's going to take care of that part while we do the things that he's called us to do, the ministry work that he's called us to do in focusing our attention on sharing the good news where other people can have eternal life in heaven with him and have that right relationship with him. So we're going to trust him and do what he's called us to do or continue to try to make something happen on our own and stress about how we're gonna pay the bills. So praise the Lord, we had favor at the grocery store with our small budget this week. Um, did lower my sights on apples, did lower my sights on bread, um, but the eggs were like 30 cents cheaper than they normally are. And that's even with getting like the all veggie fed chickens, eggs, anyway. Uh, so, I think I was like $3 under budget, so praise the Lord. It's a really difficult season, not, not just to have a financial hardship, but I think um, to go through a process of renewing my mind and to change old habits, you know, like I said, not, not just the financial part or being in short finances but I think seeing that we have been in a very long season that this is this is something for um, me to understand why we have been in this desert season for so long and realizing that um, you know we've had money as an idol we've had our finances we've spent a lot of time thinking about how to change that and coming to a realization that maybe I haven't been trusting God as much as I thought I was. Um, and 
Um, so trying to, you know, the, the main passage that God gave us, gave me, um, it tells us to, that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And so what does the Lord want me to meditate on to combat the lies of the enemy in order to move through this process and really trust? Um, I was reading last night in this book, and uh, it talks about Abraham's journey and talks about that by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Abraham hears God and heads for a place he has never been. He's in the dark about his destination, and therein lies the lesson. Trust only works in the dark. If you know where you are going, plans all in place with fallback options, you don't need to trust God. And so this is more of a season about my relationship with God, about trusting Him in absolutely everything, and feeling like today is kind of pivotal in the sense of actually spending the last of the money and there isn't anything else and having to trust that God is going to do something. Um, he may not, you know, send a Brinks truck and just, you know, have it unload in my front yard, but that God is going to do something. That this is more about, this This is more, more than just his provision. This is about me coming to a place where I can trust him in everything. He's been so faithful. Uh, you know, the more I journey, I completely understand the Israelites and the disciples because I'm just like them. He's done so much, but in my actions, I, I can see where I'm like, but what have you done for me lately? And what if these circumstances are different? What if I, you know, haven't been obedient enough? What if I have done this or that or the other thing? And, you know, God's not all about all that. He's like, just trust me. Just, you know, and, and in 1 Peter uh, 4.19, he says, So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Now, I don't really, I don't, really see um, our financial situation as suffering. I mean, Christians in the Middle East, they are suffering. But in a sense, I feel like God's, you know, saying that I need to commit myself to him in all aspects of my life and just continue to do good with what I need to do. I, I have homeschool to prepare for and um, helping out friends and family and um, so I can constant and continuing to help Scott with Christian adventure films. And those are the things for me to concentrate on to seek first his kingdom. And then all these things will be, um, given unto you. And so it's a tough, it's a tough to, when you're used to being self-reliant, when you're you, when you have a culture, even a church culture of self-reliancy of what can I do? It's tough to renew your mind and just rest in the Lord without doing and to have a complete abandoned trust. Um, but that's what I am working on.